everyone! <laughs> I'm Charlotte from Brownlow Books and I finally finished some fiction. I don't think I've read a novel in the past month. I think I've only been reading non-fiction. It's, it's been a while. <laughs> so I finally finished a book. Um, the problem is with me, not with the book. So the book. <laughs> is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. So, uh, this, I, mm. you can see up here, I have a, a 75th anniversary edition, but this was printed in 2018, I believe. But the book itself was written in 1943, set in the early 1900s. I'll just throw a lot of years at you there. <laughs> um, so it does fall under classics for me. I don't think I was ever given the option to read this in school. I don't I don't think it was ever an option to read in school. So it still falls under classics for me. I mean it's it's an older book, right? <laughs> uh, it does have a blurb from the New Yorker that says one of the greatest American novels. So I mean that's that's something for it. So, the, the, nothing, nothing really in particular happens in this book. Um, no, there's no like major plot points moving it along. It's a lot of very character driven story. Because we are following Francie Nolan from a very young age, well, her birth, we'll say, through to, I believe she's almost 17. And it's 1917 or 1918 when we end. Um, God. This book, it... It almost didn't feel like fiction. It felt like someone was telling me about their life. It felt very, very real. Very, very real, as I'm trying to say. And just like has the afterthought of I live this and now I'm adding little things into the story that I'm writing about myself kind of thing. So you see things in the future but like the character office doesn't know what's happening. So it just it just feels very much like nonfiction. It feels more like a memoir. It's just it doesn't hold back, which I really like. It's it's someone telling me about their life. They're telling me all the harsh, nitty-gritty details of it, how life is hard and unfair sometimes, and I mean, I really expected to not like this after hearing about how bleak it can be. And I, I'd like it. I love, I'm, I'm, I'm venturing to say I love this book. I'm venturing to say that I love this book. It's just so real. It feels so real. And it's just so touching and like emotions are universal and it just, it gets me. It, it gets me in my heart. <laughs> you know, how I can connect so with someone in the early 1900s when I grew up in like the 1980s, 1990s, you know? There's nearly a, a century <laughs> between this book happening and me reading it. And it's just, it's so touching. And oh my God, I got it. Uh, okay. Like I said, 1918, I was kind of really pleased that there was only like one passing line about the flu epidemic. Cause hi, we're in another one of those once in a thousand years, well not thousand, once in a century, once in a century kind of epidemics. So it was really nice to not have to read about that. Just saying. It's been rough. Um, one of the super rough things in the book, mild spoilers here for this 78 year old book, <laughs> um, Johnny Nolan, Francie's dad, It just destroyed me when he died. Like, it just felt so incredibly unfair. 
Like, this man is obviously an alcoholic, and he quits drinking, presumably because there's another baby on the way, and it kills him. Like, we know. We, there are studies now, there's science, all this stuff. Like, we know that alcohol withdrawal can kill someone. This is a thing we know now. But back then, probably not a thing they knew. So, like, everyone thinks he died an alcoholic where really he was trying to, to not drink anymore. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> um, so that was, God, that, that hurt me a lot. That he was just trying to do so well for his children and it just fucked him over. So that hurt a lot. Um, Francie's mother, Katie, has a sister who has a rough go of it. I mean, no one in this book doesn't have a rough go of it, if we're being real. Everyone kind of has a rough go of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, it's just... Oh, it's horrible and bleak, and I just loved it so much. And you get a lot of those things where they're writing about how bleak and horrible something is, but they're, like, pointing out the beauty in things at the same time, and, like, how you get through it, and, like... Just like, yeah, things are a horrible, disgusting mess, but like, look at the beauty that can still be found in things. And this book just didn't do that. It, I felt like it didn't do that. And <sighs> I think that's maybe why I love it so much. Everyone's like, oh, things are worse, but they'll get better. Don't worry. This isn't a book where it's like, things are going to get better. It's like, things are going to get worse. However worse, <laughs> however bad you think it is going to get worse. So yeah. I, uh, I really loved the book. Obviously, I'm crying. <laughs> um, so yeah, falls under the classics that I wanted to read this year. Which is nice, because I haven't read any classics yet. Behind by five books, according to Goodreads. Like I said, I haven't really been, been reading much. And when I have, it's been nonfiction kind of things. Anyways, yeah. I understand now why so many people love this book. I understand it. I totally get it. Five fucking stars. Like, I fucking love it. Alright. <laughs> Through my tears, don't forget to like and subscribe.